Доброго дня. Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. We continue today's mini marathon concerning presentation on perception of Ukraine abroad. And this uh, research was commissioned by the uh, Ukrainian Institute together with Renaissance Foundation in mind, NGO, and uh, also supported by the Ministry of Foreign um, Stakeholders and uh, the countries that uh, participated uh, uh, France, Germany, Poland, the USA, Japan, Turkey, and Hungary. And we would like to fill the gap concerning cultural diplomacy and to, uh, to analyze thoughts and uh, positions uh, with an expert community in order to make our activity uh, more informed, more well-grounded, and we really hope that uh, policies should be based on verified data that were collected in a proper way. And uh, our last uh, panel and presentation of this first cycle of presentations. Um, and the next presentations will be in several weeks, and we thank Ukraine Crisis Media Center um, uh, for the hospitality and for uh, being able to hold this presentation here and to broadcast uh, this uh, um, press briefing um, uh, with simultaneous translation. And uh, I am the moderator of Vladimir Shikom, and uh, I would like to uh, in, um, introduce uh, Anna Shellist from Ukrainian PRISM. Um, Council next is Sergei Plahi, director of the Ukrainian uh, Scientific Institute at Harvard University, and uh, he has many um, scientific papers on Ukraine in the West. And Kitina uh, Levaika, and uh, she's the president of the Ukrainian Institute in America. And the aim of this institution is uh, similar to the Ukrainian Institute goal, is to increase awareness uh, concerning culture, history, and traditions of Ukraine in the US. And I would like to say that the Ukrainian Institute of America uh, implemented important function even when there was no Ukrainian statehood, and now this tradition continues, and uh, new state institutions, uh, they reinforce uh, this activity, the institutions that appeared during the last five years. And today we have wonderful um, speakers, and uh, they are remotely with us today. I'm here alone at Ukraine Crisis Media Center and uh, we start with the presentation of the results uh, concerning perception of Ukraine in U.S. This is an ambitious task to analyze how Ukraine is perceived, attitude towards Ukraine by experts in U.S. in big country, and uh, the task we had to broadly cover the spectrum of thoughts and uh, opinions that uh, found their place in this research. And I believe that the work of Ukrainian PRISM that uh, carried out the work in this country, it was really useful and valuable. I would like to give the floor to Ghana Shellist for presentation to present uh, her ideas, the main conclusions they reach, and then we will discuss this information. And uh, you have an opportunity to ask questions. Please do this through Facebook on the page of the Ukrainian Institute, and we will voice your questions uh, during Q&A session at the end of our meeting. We have one hour for our event. Ghana, you are given the floor. Thank you, Vladimir. We thank Ukrainian Institute for this opportunity to speak the whole day about Ukraine abroad. We have wonderful co-panelists. 
and uh, they were not participants of our expert interview. And it is really interesting to get their opinion about the research we carried out. The U.S. say they were the most complicated because the United States is a really versatile country. And uh, due to peculiarities of the U.S., in different places, people have different perception of Ukraine. And uh, information that was provided uh, uh, through diaspora and through the media, uh, the, this information differed from the information that was provided uh, in other areas and uh, big cities in the US. Uh, so we carried out the big research and we invite everyone to see our uh, quotations, uh, quotations of our, fr uh, from our guests, from our respondents. And for me, it's a great honor that uh, they provided their opinion. And uh, we cannot name everyone. And you may see the, these quotations. You may use it in, this, in your work, in the work of the Institute, Embassy, and uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. And uh, these will be separate thoughts, separate conclusions we were able to reach in the course of this, this research. I will turn on my presentation in order to show uh, information. For us, it was important to speak with experts, not only from Washington, we have uh, Washington, New York, Chicago, Houston, and Los Angeles. We've chosen these biggest cities because we are really different, but uh, there is interesting concentration of institutions or actors uh, or um, th uh, those people who are involved in public diplomacy. Also, we were able to compare Ukrainian diaspora in these cities or different interaction with the Ukrainian actors. We clearly understand that political context dominates U.S. in the recent years. And in any case, political things uh, uh, went to the front line. And uh, we are going to speak more specifically, we will speak about separate conclusions we were able to reach. I hope that uh, the presentation is already on the screen. So the first conclusion we've reached is that recently we had significant increase of knowledge about Ukraine and the US, but this is knowledge about political situation and the context connected with Russian aggression and war and uh, concerning Russian and um, Ukrainian relations, but low level of knowledge about Ukrainian culture. For example, if we are speaking about embroidered shorts and, uh, um, for example, borscht or galadamor, um, those topics were raised during recent years and other topics, uh, they are only dealt uh, with by um, specialists. Common people do not know about these topics. Also, uh, there were people who deal with museums and uh, Many of them do not know the names connected with other areas of culture. Even the knowledge that they have, they are narrow for a small number of people. Also, um, a lot of information is connected with Russian Federation. This is not only about current situation. Um, and Mr. Ambassador said that, that there are many Ameri Americans um, 
who uh, work in think uh, tanks or they are journalists, they all studied Russia first. That's why, for example, Scythians, Scythians uh, they were, this information was provided as a part of Russian history. And only now this information uh, was revealed that uh, to the uh, to U.S. that this uh, uh, is the part of Ukrainian history, not Russian. And uh, also, there are many different common things about Ukraine. Ukraine is perceived usually through the context of Russian Federation, post-Soviet culture. Uh, sometimes they say that this is Eastern European um, dimension. Um, so um, usually it is included in Russian or Soviet studies. And uh, uh, also uh, some specialists consider Ukraine in the context of southern eastern area. If you compare it with uh, uh, Turkey or Japan, the difference is that they didn't have the necessity to differentiate diaspora and local people. Diaspora is new there, and in the USA, due to the fact that diaspora is big and uh, it ha um, has many generations, there is a, a different understanding um, compared with the average Americans. And uh, this is uh, the Diaspora, they want to be proud of uh, their origin. They, for example, are the fourth generation of Ukrainians. They have emotional connection and that is important for them. And uh, many responded with non-material things. And uh, these are non-material things. They were more important. On the slide, we see that the most important topic is Euromaidan, corruption, that is on the news, annexation of Crimea, information war, any type of it, also freedom, because as of today, this understanding of freedom, dignity, some values, or human capital. This was also mentioned that there is unique human potential, civil society. It was mentioned by uh, those who work in uh, political think tanks and those who work in cultural institutions. Also topic of Chernobyl and uh, HBO film about Chernobyl played a very big role in provision of information about uh, Chernobyl. And uh, some people do not understand uh, to whom Chernobyl belonged to, but also there is different perception of borscht. And uh, every second respondent said that after a series of articles in the American media about uh, uh, whether the uh, whether borscht is Russian or Ukrainian, they more clearly understand that borscht is an important element of Ukrainian culture. It is worth saying that all respondents said that for Americans, media and the information that is provided through the media, through mass culture, is really important. Because even experts say what is on the news. And uh, if Ukraine is uh, on the news, everyone follows. And if Belarus is on top, so uh, uh, and, uh, information about Ukraine then go to the background. So the narratives that are prevailing, these are political narratives. Washington, New York, and Chicago, they uh, have more knowledge about Ukraine and its culture. These are 
the biggest. Uh, uh, so New York, they have uh, uh, the cultural life, and uh, Washington is the capital, and uh, Chicago. Uh, there is Ukrainian institution. Uh, uh, there are Ukrainian institutions, Ukrainian diaspora, and Ukrainian radio, and. Uh, uh, in other places, uh, there are no, um, uh, there is no Ukrainian diaspora, but the, uh, there is Houston, and they have new diaspora. There is some assimilation with the um, uh, overall post-Soviet community about cultural phenomena. Uh, we expected it, uh, and uh, we say that the biggest number of cultural phenomenon, this was Maidan, and information about Galadamur, and information about Holocaust. Many people in U.S. said that this bridge with Jewish culture, with Jewish diaspora, is really important. Ukraine should not differentiate from it because this is important for the public. It may help in the representation of Ukraine in the U.S. Gogol, Shalom Aleichem, representatives of Ukrainian and Jewish culture, they are known and uh, painters are not known, especially if we are speaking about the uh, um, beginning of the 20th century. And uh, only some people knew about them, but these are those people who directly deal with these issues. So this demonstrated low level of knowledge and some respondents uh, think that uh, uh, Ukraine should not uh, promote these uh, um, painters and uh, uh, so uh, and so uh, we had the question about uh, associations with the Ukrainian culture. Here we presented some names and titles. There were some unexpected things. Usually Borsh is associated with Ukraine or with the Russian Federation. The sound gets interrupted. In the U.S. we uh, uh, saw that Borsh is very often associated with Poland and the representatives of the Polish diaspora, the fourth generation, which actually have no contacts with historical Poland, they were saying, yeah, that's our childhood, we had it. And uh, that is um, important. Who else are we talking about? We were talking about some others, representatives of Ukrainian culture, uh, people sometimes people don't want to associate some people, some persons with any country. Kazimir Malevich, who's very popular in the U.S., the sound got interrupted. Sorry. No input. No input. Uh, I believe that the connection got interrupted with Hannah. Now we are trying to bring her back. But, uh, and not to stop, I would like to ask Sergei a question. 
And the question is, Ukrainian presence in the U.S. has a different nature from uh, Ukrainian presence in many other countries. In the beginning, I mentioned that in the U.S., for dozens of years, there have been institutions, cultural research, museum, uh, archives, uh, which uh, uh, before the independence and after the independence of Ukraine were disseminating the knowledge about Ukraine and the Northern America and the U.S. I would like to ask you how uh, the results that we've heard about from Hannah. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? We were restoring the connection. Now I ask the question to Sergei, and then we will proceed with the presentation. Sergei, to what extent these results reflect the activity of the institutions, uh, Northern American, the U.S., Ukrainian institutions, and how much uh, you can follow the influence of these institutions there? Yes, we can see the influence. If you look at people who were interviewed, then we see that the institutions are pre present, which did not, uh, which couldn't exist without the financial support of the diaspora. I'm the director of Ukrainian Research Institute of Harvard University. It wouldn't exist without the support of Ukrainian community or diaspora. And that is true talking about most of the institutions. The interest to the support of cultural projects uh, uh, existed uh, before the interest uh, was related to certain waves, uh, but nevertheless, Ukraine is in a privileged, uh, con in privileged uh, situation compared to other Eastern European countries because of the efforts of the diaspora. We are the model for actions of other groups, like the state of Poland. Poland uh, and to, it's difficult to exaggerate how important uh, diaspora was in creating these institutions. And that is the platform that Ukraine has, and it has to use it for cooperation. OK, we will continue later with you, Sergei. I have several more questions, but let's go back to Hanna. Hanna, thank you. I will not uh, show the slides. I can tell without the slides. Talking about phenomena, we understand that we have big gaps, cultural gaps, especially in uh, uh, w w what is related to personalities. The biggest phenomena is embroidered blouse, Vishivanka. Vishivanka became famous because of the uh, current modern industry, because of the Hollywood stars who were uh, dressed in famous Ukrainian brands in Vishvankas. And there was a comment that pro possibly fashion is one of the spheres which Ukraine has to promote in the U.S. because that's of interest. Uh, we just need to use this moment. As to um, less researched topics, you were talking about what is close to you. I cannot say that, well, we were talking about the necessity to learn Ukrainian experience in fighting with hybrid threats and the information war. 
we were talking about the necessity to know about Ukrainian creative industries. Also, the knowledge of Ukrainian uh, contemporary literature and the films, but uh, at least uh, some uh, abstracts from new Ukrainian books are to be translated so that American publishing houses decide on whether that's interesting or not. The initiative should come from Ukraine. As to the food, many are talking about that. Many respondents were in Ukraine. They emphasized that these trips were important for their understanding and perception of Ukraine. One of the first associations was food, and then Sansofia and the architecture of uh, Kiev cathedrals, and this emotional, visual, taste uh, associations created a very positive image by which, which they were perceiving everything related to Ukraine. They were, you mentioned that uh, Crimean Tata culture is to be more presented. What's interesting, you were talking about the necessity of col col collaboration with other institutions. Uh, the collaboration with the museum, uh, Jewish museum or Jewish institutions, Ukrainian artists are to be present not just in Ukrainian galleries, but in the Museum of Contemporary Arts, uh, so that they are included into the general contest. And all the respondents also mentioned that Ukraine is competing seriously with other cultures in the US. It's not just the competition with Poland or Czech Republic, but it's about competition with uh, French, Italian culture, because that is perceived as something else in the US. And some respondents were saying that they uh, do not associate it. Like first association, France cheese, Italy wine, but they couldn't say what Ukraine is associated with. And uh, they were saying that we don't have a single brand uh, uh, which would be translated uh, or which would be uh, disseminated in the U.S. What else can we be talking about? The U.S. have many to contacts with Ukraine, and that's positive for us compared to other countries of the world. These uh, contacts are being established, but as to new cooperation, it's important to understand where funding comes from and also the contact, the contact with the state is of importance. They don't say that state programs, that's something good, bad. They say that there should be funds for some uh, educational programs, but uh, uh, as to associations, Ukrainian Institute in America, it's both plus and minus for Ukrainian Institute in Ukraine. It's positive because Ukrainian Institute is very famous, but American Institute is famous. It's well known, that's positive association, but because of that, when we are talking about Ukrainian Institute, then some respondents were thinking, okay, we visited them, but then when you mentioned that that's Ukrainian institution, they realized that there's uh, some misunderstanding. So uh, when you uh, go to American market, you need to think about what to do with that. That's the positive, something positive which could help. And then the problem that uh, our respondents were talking about, that Ukrainian public diplomacy uh, was uh, directed towards Ukrainian community, diaspora, and the main target audience were representatives of diaspora. But even the representatives of diaspora said that that was a big uh, 
minus uh, because you should not explain to them what Ukraine is. They have some uh, understanding of that, they're interested. Everyone was saying that Ukrainians should go wider. Ukraine should go, uh, should uh, uh, go to other Americans. They shouldn't be limited by diaspora so that uh, uh, there's no feeling that it's large and it's a large audience that would produce some result. That is something that many were mentioning. I will not mention such things that we know about, like that there was a serious uh, American information, uh, serious Russian information campaign in the US. Uh, that is what we know. And uh, now briefly some recommendations uh, of our survey. First uh, is uh, to expand the audience, we mentioned that. Second, it's necessity to create uh, Ukrainian research institutions and other universities, New York and Harvard, that's great, but that's not enough, taking into account the uh, size of the U.S. Uh, like the university in South California, they were saying that they interested in having Ukrainian studies. Also, a lot was mentioned about collaboration, about some joint projects. Americans are interested in joint uh, uh, production of films or publishing books, joint surveys, exchange programs, work with archives. Uh, the work of uh, Jewish diaspora is to be enhanced and uh, Jewish history, both positive and negative, is to be used because the target audience, which is interested in contacts with the historic motherland, they are quite influential in cultural community. Everyone was saying that it's important to get you, uh, Jewish uh, community involved. Uh, so then contemporary arts, contemporary Ukraine is what could be of interest for Americans. If it is uh, Ukrainian cuisine, it should be something what uh, similar to what Evgen Klopotenka offers, something that shows not archaic Ukraine, but contemporary Ukraine. Americans love to hear, just like Japanese, they like to hear they don't want to hear about tragic pages. They want to hear about some success stories about the future. And this context is very interesting for them. A lot was mentioned about necessity of PPP. The projects which could be of interest for Americans cost money and the efforts of the state and the private business are to be combined. You remember some oligarchs who were trying to lobby um, certain issues in the U.S., so the image of the company that would help is uh, very important because Americans um, are very serious as to reputation of such company. Also, virtual sphere could be of interest for Americans. Now, when borders are closed, but there are some virtual museums opening Ukraine via virtual space for Americans could become of great interest. Fashion, that's what we mentioned, restaurant. But here there's a lot of competition. I can give you an example of Georgian restaurant in Washington, D.C., which has become very popular. Ukraine could do the same. And uh, Mm, contemporary music. You mentioned Dacha Bracha, Anuka, and other projects uh, which combine ethnic and uh, modern music. And this combination 
is what could be of most interest for Americans. Thank you, Hanna, for your attempt uh, to um, put it all in one presentation. I understand that you have many more findings. Now we invite everyone who's interested in this survey, please read the report on the website of Ukrainian Institute. And uh, I would like to make a bridge to Sergei. Uh, Hanna, you said that it is important to enlarge the audience. At the same time, we understand that resources of the Ukrainian Institute and resources uh, which exist in the state of Ukraine are um, mm, not unlimited. We need to be very flexible with how we use this resource. We need to prioritize the topics with which we work and the geography. In the context of any country, we have a dilemma. Do we work for a large mass audience and we communicate mass product from Ukraine? Or we concentrate on more narrow expert audience, which then become the multiplier of knowledge about Ukraine, and they disseminate the knowledge uh, about Ukraine in their intellectual or professional networks. We have this discussion on what sh type of cultural diplomacy should it be. It should be mass diplomacy or more intellectual which goes deeper into some cultural niches. Sergei, could you please provide comments? I believe in the U.S. the power of expert and media uh, environment is very influential, talking about uh, developing the public opinion, and we see that especially in the U.S. How to choose between either or, or maybe it should be and and. I believe that the answer should be and and. But if it's so, then the proportion of this cocktail is of importance. You mentioned human resources, financial resources, I would add time resources that are limited. We need to select a priority. I believe the priority should be expert communities, some cultural communities, contacting and cooperating with them we do not lose the opportunity to influence wider audience in the U.S. or in any other country. I believe that still we need to emphasize uh, these things, taking into account all our resources. And also, I mentioned the limited time resource. Ukraine is in the news. Not just experts are interested in Ukraine. Our neighbors know about Ukraine. Ukraine will not be always present in the news. We hope that our military conflict, the war with Russia, which is part of this interest, will not last forever. And that means that this window of opportunities should be used. An example is the situation with the Eastern Europe, Poland, Hungary. There was a lot of attention to that in the 60s and 70s. And today, 
they disappeared from uh, uh, the news in the U.S. Interest to this region, to this uh, countries is now lower. If everything is fine in our country, the same will happen to us. And today, tomorrow, maybe the day after tomorrow, we'll be able to change something when people are ready to hear us, to listen to us. And again, the fact that Ukraine is at this cultural platform is uh, very important, and I would like to thank everyone who joined us. Ukraine comes with some financial resource, which is small, but the uh, Ukraine comes not just as uh, some a country that is asking for something. Thank you, Sergei. That coincides with our observations. Uh, so resources of the Ukrainian Institute are uh, small, but even the small resources highly assessed due to its availability because it uh, is available and uh, when you come to your partners with a proposal and uh, some resource, some starting capital, then they speak with you because we do not ask for anything. We are partners. That's why I like the words you've said. Could you comment on this window of opportunities that may narrow or may close for Ukraine during the next years? Maybe we should increase this interest to Ukraine, not only Ukraine as a state, but maybe Ukrainian actors are able to attract attention to the country or to um, provide information to uh, foreign counterparts uh, in a proper way about Ukraine in order to make them proponents of Ukraine. Our diplomats uh, are dealing usually with uh, diplomacy that is not public diplomacy. Uh, from what I know, uh, this window of opportunity, uh, this interest to Ukraine was used. And uh, we face some extreme situations when there is an issue of war, the issue of negotiations, economic help, and uh, it is easy to lose cultural element in all of this. I know that recently address is increased concerning uh, requests from Ukrainian embassy in Washington. This activity increases, and uh, I cannot bring an example where some breakthrough was reached, some big event. The embassy actively cooperates with Antonovich Foundation. Uh, there are some awards. There is room for improvement, but I cannot tell you about um, even one case of smashing success. And I believe that this window of opportunity is still open and we have this room for success. I would like to speak with uh, Katie now, Ukrainian Institute in America for a long time has been implementing this function of cultural ambassador in US. And I would like, first of all, to ask you about the results, the recommendations uh, concerning this report. And I would like to hear about your experience concerning work with Ukrainian culture and how it is presented to American audience and about the conclusions of our research, whether they um, are in agreement with your experience, with your work. And I know that you will speak 
English and um, there is a small remark. You may turn off the sound and uh, uh, in order not to hear both yourself and simultaneous translation. Thank you very much for giving me the floor and thank you for allowing me speaking English. Do you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, so, uh, to answer your question or to begin to answer Okay. Um, you know, I, I would definitely echo many of the uh, because, you know, there is definitely, uh, I mean, the diaspora plays an enormous role in the success here in, um, in the United States. Um, Everybody's, uh, you know, the diaspora is 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 walking. There are many different, um, you know, immigration waves, and so everybody comes from a different. So even all the diaspora is not a unified group, it's a disparate group with different um, connections. Uh, uh, I would say that you know, from all the findings and the suggestions. That we are not at a crossroads, but I think we have the greatest opportunity now to really, uh, reach out to the uh, to the American community, and we've been doing that for over seventy years. So, for example, you know, I'm sitting in the Ukrainian Institute of America right now. We own Plastic building on the corner of 75th Street and 5th Avenue. And, um, you know, that makes a difference. Um, you know, our founder, um, William Jews, understood that in order to get the type of um, respect uh, from, the, from the local community, from, from the non Ukrainian community, you know, we really needed to make this that had nothing to do actually with our um, culture or our history or art or music, but it was the wrapping in which it came. And I think that has made a very big difference for us. Um, in fact, uh, yesterday I was um, on a, on a different and it, it had to do with China, and I was broadcasting from my, um, from my virtual room in the Ukrainian Institute, and people immediately said, What's that room? Where are you? And I said, oh, I'm in And out of eight people in the breakout room, six of them said, oh, I've been there. My daughter performed there. I took my picture, my wedding pictures in front of there because my family is wishing to be there. Um, you know, so I, and I believe the architect of your building is the same architect as that the Jewish museum. So, suddenly, you know, came this um, conversation about Ukrainian and Ukrainian culture and how the Ukrainian Institute founded it and what we do instead of talking about China, which was a great effort. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I would also say that, um, you know, we have an opportunity, I think, that was not highlighted in the paper, um, which is to really, um, you know, to focus on excellence in business that um, Ukrainians have, especially in technology. So if you think about, you know, all of the amazing companies that have been founded uh, by Ukrainian founders, so we think that's an opportunity to use that as a book uh, for people to become Ukrainians and what Ukrainians do. So to me, that's that, that is, is a real opportunity. Uh, is, uh, did you want me to continue, or did you have another question? Pani Katie, у вас якісь проблеми зараз були зі звуком? Можливо, що зі зв'язком? Деякі слова просто... Some words were lost, but we understood overall what you were speaking about. But there were some breaks in communication. Maybe... 
I hear interpreter. We understood, uh, but uh, there were some interruptions in communication, maybe something with connection. We hope that uh, we will have a more stable connection. Uh, and uh, did you want did you want me to continue just uh, make some other observations uh, or did you have a separate question for me you you can continue you can yeah please please do or you can ask also questions to the to the other panelists as well so i mean just uh, you know you had i i i had you know been thinking about sort of what the paper had um, you know, the findings in the paper and some of the things maybe where I thought, you know, some of the issues that weren't addressed, um, Professor Plohi had actually addressed one of them, which is that kind of like I was thinking, you know, it's really great to have this strategic plan, but, uh, you know, it's also very important to be tactical. And um, the fact, you know, as he highlighted, you know, because we are in the news now, we have this window of opportunity. So, you know, um, having a strategic plan is one thing, but maybe accelerating it, uh, you know, when you can take advantage tactically of, uh, of situations, I think it's very important as part of the long-term plan for Ukraine and, uh, you know, for having people uh, really understand who we are and, and, you know, put us kind of, you know, on, on a really uh, world-class kind of level in terms of their thinking. Um, you know, another thing that really struck me is that, um, as uh, Panyahana had, uh, you know, had mentioned, that, you know, many of the negative associations um, have to do uh, uh, with political corruption and also perceived weakness, and vis-a-vis uh, -vis Russia, of course. And, you know, that puts us in a victim role as opposed to a survivor role. And, you know, the one thing growing up as, you know, as, as a first-generation uh, Ukrainian-American here is, you know, I never really got the sense from any of my parents or grandparents or the people in the diaspora, they, they, did never, they never felt like victims. They felt like they were survivors. And so I think that's a really important um, kind of messaging twist that needs to happen somehow. Uh, and I think that that would really be very helpful in terms of how we're perceived. Um, and then actually just, uh, you know, I, I know you asked Professor Plawhi about, uh, you know, kind of can, does, can he come up with an example of a, or a window of opportunity? This is a very minor one, and it certainly isn't a, a ground shifting one. But I do recall, you know, back in 1992 during the Olympics, um, you know, when Viktor Pythenko won, you know, the, the gold medal for ice skating and then subsequently Osama Bayul did. And that was, of course, right around the time that, you know, Ukraine was regaining its independence. Um, you know, everybody started talking about Ukraine. So, you know, there are ways to hook people in that have um, nothing to do with the actual kind of goal, maybe, but um, they're interested enough in something else that's going on in the news to then start to, you know, dig a little deeper and become a little bit more engaged and aware. So I guess that's really, uh, that's all I have to say. And I would love to ask the panelists a couple of questions um, if, they, if they have time, if we have time. Так, будь ласка, у нас є ще хвилин 10 точно. Yes, we have 10 more minutes for discussion. Um, so uh, in terms of, you know, where we are in the world right now and, um, you know, understanding that, you know, it's not a one-size-fits-all message uh, and that different things appeal to different messages, appeal to different countries and to different um, subgroups of people within countries. Um, what role do you feel that technology can play in, to either um, unify, accelerate, or perhaps even to possibly open up additional room for misinformation? I mean, we're, you know, in a world where, you know, traditional PR um, is, is taking on a very different role. So, um, you know, on the one hand, uh, you know, you can sort of uh, uh, in, uh, embark on a PR campaign and uh, it could actually cost you a lot less um, because, you know, you have the ability to use, you know, social media platforms. On the other hand, uh, you know, it does uh, open up the opportunity for a lot of um, information or misinformation. So just your thoughts on technology and its role and, and how it might help or hurt in this effort. Пані Кеті, кому адресовано ваше питання? Actually to both, but first to Professor Plohey, please. Пане Сергію, питання до вас. Thank you for your question. I think that we have seen 
during the last year that opportunity to communicate is uh, very important. Borders disappeared. We may speak through the platforms. This is the reality of life uh, for institutions, and this is a powerful factor to overcome the borders. These technical opportunities, we had them a year ago, but they were not used. And uh, when we return to a normal format, we should not lose our communication skills that we have, because this is a powerful unit to unite these opportunities and to present Ukrainian technology, Ukrainian culture, or achievements in the sphere of IT technologies or other spheres. This is a positive that we should preserve. And uh, um, COVID brought many bad things, but this was the only thing that was really great about information and disinformation. So Ukraine is at the front line of this fight, and uh, and I focused uh, my attention on this, that the United States, they uh, should study this experience of Ukraine in countering disinformation. And uh, this was one of the factor, uh, factors where Ukraine may uh, provide example. And uh, we have such a problem, and we are not the only one in US and in the world Everyone faces this problem, and uh, we need to reinforce our cooperation on this. And once again, we should speak about what is going on inside the country in this context, because the ways of disinformation, the ways of manipulation, they will continue. Uh, three or four years, we were at the front line, and we remain at the front line. And uh, we will share this with the world, but we need support of the world to fight against this information. So, uh, and uh, so this is my response. And I thank you for your question. Would you like to add something? Thank you very much. Several things. First. Uh, speaking about overall perception in U.S., maybe there will be some difference in opinion, but we wanted to see the perception of Ukrainian culture in a broad sense, including education, public diplomacy, and other issues connected with them. And our research ha has shown that uh, associations and messages that should be promoted in U.S. Many people said that innovations are important, new technologies are important, and Ukraine has good results in IT. So uh, Ukraine should be promoted as a country of success. We should speak about successful stories, and people mentioned those areas. Uh, that are connected not with the cultural sphere, mainly with the technology. And um, at that, many people mentioned modern Ukrainian culture as a story of success. Also, Ukrainian cinema, new Ukrainian cinema, that could be of interest to Americans. And here, I believe that this conclusion is really important. Uh, the United States, uh, the, they uh, believe that the image of the country is formed not only based on cultural dimension. Here, political and overall social and cultural uh, messages or knowledge, they are a basis on which we may um, impose the layer of culture. and. Uh, uh, there should be general interest to Ukraine as a modern state. And uh, uh, I really liked uh, your opinion about victim and survivor. What do you like to say here? But 
That is what many of our respondents were talking about, and it was interesting to ask not just from Ukrainian diaspora, but we were asking the representatives of Russian, Belarusian, and Mexican diaspora. And they look at uh, what's uh, happening as well, and they were also talking about that, the perception of Ukraine. Those who managed to survive, uh, those who are survivors, Uh, they looked at them as someone who's fighting the enemy now in the East or in the Crimea. That image, that perception of Ukraine was like a golden thread uh, uh, going uh, through all the interviews. And many were talking about the experience of Ukraine. Ukraine and the U.S. could be interesting not as uh, the uh, subject uh, uh, of scandal uh, with Trump, but also we can talk about Ukraine as the country that has experience, which it can share with the U.S. There's a professor from Los Angeles who said that Ukrainian examples are uh, what my colleagues uh, are underestimating. They are not ready to understand how Ukraine managed to overcome some of the difficulties and that Ukrainian society has to pay attention to that. They have to learn how social media could uh, uh, either help the state or the society or uh, just uh, have a negative impact. Uh, and uh, that is why I emphasize uh, that please read the, the quotations, not just the conclusions. The quotations demonstrate how Americans could be uh, could, could be ready to better perceive Ukraine and to know more about Ukraine. You were talking also about streaming services. We were saying that if you are not in Hollywood, you are not in the U.S., but today that's uh, quite an obsolete uh, notion, but we uh, believe that there should be more Ukrainian films uh, in Netflix uh, with the English subtitles. That is some cultural element. First, uh, they will not think that this is Ukrainian film. They will just uh, look at it as, as something new. But this way, not just experts, but general audience will learn more. And uh, that uh, means that uh, we need to ask ourselves how can Ukraine find new channels of communications and new messages that would be perceived by American society, understanding how different cities or different uh, layers of population could be interested in different things. And that is very important for the U.S. Any information campaign should start from clear definition of uh, uh, what is our target audience. Thank you for your replies and for your very good questions. Uh, we don't have more time to continue our discussion. We just have several more minutes. And in the end, I would like to ask Kathy a question taking into account what we were talking about. What do you believe? What is uh, the most, uh, the, the, the cultural content from Ukraine, which would be in uh, the demand, which would be perceived the best by American audience, understanding that these are different audiences, in fact. But from your professional point of view, from re the results of this survey, what do you believe? Could Ukraine use 
which cultural potential could Ukraine use for these communications to reach their viewer, their listener, their target audience? I understand your question. Are you asking which medium? Uh, I mean, um, which uh, t sort of types of cultural content and cultural products okay, that's what I thought you were would asking. be most you, welcome, most, yeah, sought so after? I, I think that, um, you know, probably at the top three. Uh, so just in terms of, you know, I think um, as, as Panyahana, you know, w was referring to film, I think film is very popular now and it's, um, you know, uh, especially with a lot of people on their computers and the ability to stream. Uh, I think that is, uh, you know, that is a medium uh, and, and, and a, a cultural avenue that has not been as explored already. I mean, we have been focusing on uh, music and art here at the Institute for a very long time. We've added films and books and, you know, and, and all, all those types of things as well. You know, I think people are also very interested in, uh, in hearing about, you know, um, what is going on, like just informational. So um, I would say that, you know, panel discussions on, you know, on, on topics where you can really get granular, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, difficult topics to talk about that people don't like to talk about, um, you know, and not just, you um, you know, kind of just broad what's going on in Ukraine, but, um, you know, some of our most popular, um, you know, webinars that we've had here had to do with, you know, when COVID unfolded, what's going, you know, what what what, what is ha happening in Ukraine? What steps is Ukraine taking? I think that, you know, people are, are interested in kind of granular um, discussions about what is going on in Ukraine. I realize that's not an, exactly a cultural message, but I do think that if, you know, if, if you talk about, let's say, again, you know, what's happening in various parts of the art world um, or parts of the, you know, the film world, you know, the things that people want to hear uh, details and, and, and Zoom gives them the opportunity to do so and you, you can do it globally. Um, you know, I think art also art is, is a very big opportunity as well, especially since, you know, there's so much opportunity in digital art now. Um, so I think, you know, and, and there will probably be new cultural mediums that are still to be developed um, as we move forward um, and technology accelerates. So I think that um, th those are where the opportunities lie. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, all the participants of this discussion. We uh, didn't have enough time to discuss it. I hope that we'll continue that uh, these discussions individually. Ukrainian Institute uh, will uh, take the results of this survey because we are planning our work in the U.S. I thank you for this discussion. I believe that it has, is not over. I would like to remind you that these were presentations of the first three analytical surveys of how Ukraine is perceived abroad in Japan, Turkey, and the U.S. We'll continue this series in a few you weeks in the UCMC will be talking about Poland, Germany, France, and and Hungary, where we also got some very unexpected results. Thank you all for being with us today, and goodbye.